Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bethel Assembly Online again. We hope you're having a great uh, quarantine and you are staying safe and healthy with your family. You are in our prayers, and we are so grateful that you are part of our church family. And if you're watching this and you're not a member of Bethel, we hope you enjoy our service and hope you can worship with us this morning. Let's lift our hands wherever you're at at home. Let's lift our hands and let's welcome the Holy Spirit in our midst. Father, we love you. We come today to worship you, to praise you, to lift your name on high. Lord, you are so holy and you are so awesome and you are above all things that are going on in our world right now. Lord, we know that you have a plan, Lord God. We know that you bring us through tribulation to get us to something even better on the other side. And we come this morning to praise you, to lift you up in Jesus' name. Worship with us at home this morning.
and our trust in you, Jesus. Today, Lord, we raise a hallelujah. Church, wherever you're at right now, on YouTube or Facebook, we ask you to lift up your own hallelujah today. Raise it up to the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords.
in prayer this morning. We know that God is still alive and still on the throne for us today, even though we're not physically meeting together. We know that God is meeting with us. He's meeting with you in your home this morning. He's meeting with us as well today. Join us this morning as we pray for our nation. We pray for the lost. We pray for our leaders of our country, our city, our um, local state governments. We pray for those that are sick and those that are being affected, every one of us, um, by this virus. And we have regular needs that are continuing to be an issue with, within our church family, within your home as well. So join us right now as we pray and we come to our God this morning at this time. Lord, Father, God, we're just so thankful, Lord, to be able to call upon your name. Lord, at any hour of any day, God, we can simply speak the name of Jesus and we can immediately begin to feel your presence coming and invade our lives. God, the comfort that your name, the comfort that your presence brings to us is unable to be put into words. Lord, I am so thankful to be able to call upon your name today, God. Lord, to be called a child of the Most High. Second Chronicles 7.14, very familiar passage of scripture, reads like this. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Father, we thank you for this precious word you've given us this day. We ask, sir, God, that you will speak to us and that you will guide us. And Lord, that you will certainly heal our land today. God, we have so many that are sick, so many that needs your hand to heal them, so many friends, God, and our our country is in is in is in need 
of your hand. Please help us today. And I believe that you're going to do it in the name of Jesus. Everyone said, amen. Let me remind you again this, this morning that this word is inspired. It's infallible. It's inerrant. And it is eternal. We have a great situation, great problem in, uh, in our country and in the church. And there is no way we can attack this or correct any of it unless we have prayer like we have not prayed in a while. We can make a difference. I want you to know that we have authority over the enemy and over every power and principality. And not only that, we have hope. We have, an ex we have a, a future and filled with the promises of God. Expect those promises. Today we carry on a struggle that we haven't had anything like this in our lifetime and no one that we know of. It's called the invisible enemy. But I want you to know the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the tearing down of strongholds. They are mighty. Don't forget that. We must push hard against this age we're in and against this, this enemy that we're up against. Listen, what good will it do us if we do all the right things and forget about Jesus? If it, if, it doesn't, if it doesn't begin and end with Jesus, we're, we're still messed up. We cannot surrender, but we need to do something. We need to get mad. We need to get mad with the enemy. We need to get angry enough till we fall down on our faces, until we call out to God until he hears us. We need to get really mad. We need to be pushing back against this. We don't need to surrender. We need to get in the fight. And we need to get mad. How can this nation be turned back to God? Or can this nation be turned back to God? The answer to that is yes. The only question is, is do we want to turn it back? Because God gives it and leaves it in our hand if we will only do what he's asked us to do. We can make a difference. The first portion of this scripture says, my people, if my people, he's not calling the world, he's not calling the Gentiles, or he's not calling the heathens, he's calling the church. He's calling people who call him by name believers. He's asking them, matter of fact, he is commanding us to make a difference. We can't make a difference. He's just waiting on us, waiting on us to start doing what he's called us to do. He says, my people are called by my name, Believers in Christ. You know, we like to do finger pointing and say, it's your fault, it's your fault, it's your fault. Let me tell you whose fault it is. It's mine. It's mine. And it's, ever, it's everyone's. The Bible teaches us that judgment always begins at the house of God. Not governments, not schools, not any of the other institutions, not hospitals. God points the finger at his people and says, it's your fault. You're the reason because of if, if we'll get where we're supposed to get, God will get where he is supposed to get. Someone's going to be called into the carpet, called into the office. I never have liked being called into the office. It's not a pleasant thing, but somebody is. We are the ones who've been asked to pray. We are in a very, very, very unique position. God is expecting to hear from us. And not just any old, any old prayer. Listen, uh, let me tell you, this is, a, this is very humorous, but it's, it's pretty good. You know, uh, these, this group of men are outside and they, uh, they hear something outside and there is a tornado and it is barreling down right upon them and it's about to strike the house that they're in. And one man that stepped outside and looked at it come back and said, if any of you need know how to pray, you need to pray now. And one man lifted his hand and said, I, I can say what my daddy used to say. He said, well, you better get at it. He said, Lord Jesus, thank you for what we're about to receive. Now, this is not the kind of prayer that's going to move the enemy out of the doorsteps or out of, the, the, out of our country. 
We're talking about a prayer that will really, that we get down beside our beds or beside wherever your prayer closet is and pray until you, and you pray until you know that heaven has heard you. That's what God is talking about. He expects us to pray. He expects us to call upon him. And he wants us to. And as much as, as important as that is, he hears us when we pray. He hears and knows the very in thoughts and intents of your heart. So when you're thinking something, he knows it. When you're praying, he knows it. When you're, you know, you're meditating on something, he knows it. Yes, he hears you. He, it's important for you to pray and meditate on him. He hears you. He says, if we will humble ourselves, I know it's a hard thing. It's embarrassing sometimes, we think, to humble ourselves. But God thinks it's a good thing. Now, I know no one wants to be humbled. No one wants to, wants to you know, uh, um, be embarrassed. But God wants us to humble ourselves. It's a humbling thing to admit, hey, I'm wrong. It's a humbling thing to say, hey, it's my fault. It's a humbling thing to say, hey, you know what? You, you can put it all on me because I'm responsible. I'm the responsible party. We live in a world, and not just nowadays, not now, it's, just, it's always been, that no one wanted to take responsibility for their whatever it was, their sin or their error or whatever it is. It started way back in Genesis Adam, Adam didn't want to take responsibility. He didn't want to take responsibility. And Satan didn't want to take responsibility. And now it's worked on the way, its way up to us. It's okay to be a proud American as long as you can humble yourself and say, I'm sorry, God. Help me to do better. Help me to do better. I was wrong. I was wrong. I had a wrong attitude. I had a wrong way of thinking. I was just, I was just wrong. I'm sorry. Help me to change myself. Help me to change so I won't do it again. Let me also tell you that prayer is never obsolete. It's never outdated and it's never too late. When Lazarus had died, he'd been buried for four days. When Jesus came on the scene, I don't understand it. I can't explain it. It's not meant to be explained the way it's meant to be believed. It's meant to be believed. Four days and before Jesus came, he knew about it before he died. And when he finally came, he waited till he died on purpose so he could show them the glory of God. I want you to know God will show us the glory of God if we will wait and believe on him, trusting in him. And then, and then it goes on to say that scripture to turn from their wicked ways. Oh, church, we have many things to turn from. Many things to turn from. The Bible teaches us to draw near to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. But the devil's not going to flee as long as you're playing with him. As long as you're doing exactly what he wants, he's not going anywhere. And you have no power as long as you're dabbling in sin. You have no power to resist him. You can't say, leave me alone. And the Satan leave you alone because you're doing exactly what he wants. You're dabbling in sin. But if you will turn, humble yourself, you'll turn. Stop, do, stop doing wickedness. Stop doing evil. Stop it. Brother Jack, I don't have the power. You're right, but Jesus does. You're right. You don't have the power, but Jesus does. We're notorious for saying I'm sorry, but never turning from our sin and stopping it. Let's turn away from sin. Let's turn away from it. Repentance means to turn. It means to turn completely around and go in another direction. Let us do that. How about let's do this. Let's pray that our, our country, our churches will take a new direction and start lifting up and stop trying to accommodate the world. Stop trying to act like the world and let us be the church we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to be imitators of the world. The world is supposed to be imitators of us. Let's get after that. Let's do this. Something we have to ask is so is, do we love evil so much that we don't want to turn from it? If you love evil so much, you've got a problem with Jesus. 
We can't say that we love God and we love Jesus if you love evil. There is that, That's not going to work. If you love Jesus, sin is going to be something that's inside of you. And when you see it, you're going to be, it's going to cringe your spirit. You're going to, you're going to want to get away from that. It's time to seek God. And by the way, there is a time to seek God. This is it. This is it. Let me encourage you, and I've been doing this lately here at church, but let me encourage you to open your Bible and actually read it. Read your Bible. Get on your knees and pray. God will hear you from heaven. God is waiting for you. I don't know how many fathers or, or parents we have out there and the children. Let me put it to you like this. When, when I was a kid and I was at home, I was always waiting for my dad to get home. I was waiting for him to get there. Because I wanted to see him. I wanted to play with him. I wanted to do all the things that, that uh, sons do with their dads. Now, how much more of a dad do you think God is? How much more of a father do you think God is? Now, you may have not, your father, your, your, uh, your uh, family life may have been all messed up. Can I tell you something? You just show me somebody that ain't. You show me one. You show me one. They, they, we don't have a perfect one down here, but we have a perfect father. We have a perfect father. God wants to hear from you. He wants you to hear from you. He longs for America to return. Let me tell you something. It's God's will that America turn. It's God's will that America repent. It's God's will. If you say, well, no, no. It's God's will that, that we as the people re repent and turn to God. That's it. That's it. And the Bible says if we do that, God will obligate himself to heal our land. Can I tell you something? God is a man that cannot lie. If you do what he says, he'll do what he says. It's that simple. He said, I will forgive their sin and heal their land. You know what he's asking for or waiting for? He's waiting for somebody to ask. And then I'll do it. Forgiveness awaits everyone who asks. God forgives. Brother Jeff, you don't know what I've done, what I've seen, what I've, where I've been. No, I don't. I don't have to. God does. And he says, if you'll just simply ask me, I'll forgive you. I'll forgive you. Can America return? Well, that's all going to be dependent upon you and I who are called to pray. If we pray, America will return. And if we don't, it won't. God wants to send rain. God wants to send revival. God wants to send a restoration. God wants to kill these plagues. And even more, he wants us to repent. God has given us a great blessing in this country. It's a blessing worth preserving through prayer. Let us, let us act accordingly in this, in this special time. We need, to, we need during all this time to pray. Listen, if, if you have been saying lately that I don't have time to pray. Maybe you've said lately, I don't have time to read the Bible. I think you've been given it. I think you've got enough time to read the Bible and you've got enough time to pray now. Make wise use of it. Amen. This is what I want you to do. I want you to expect God to heal our land. I want you to expect God to heal your, uh, the lives of your family. I want you to, I expect God to heal that. You need to put your trust in Jesus. He will never fail you. And remember that Jesus is coming soon. You don't want to miss him. Amen. Let us pray. Yes. Almighty God, we ask you to please forgive us, God. Forgive us, God. Yes. God, we are, our hands are full of sins. Our hearts are full of sin. God, our mind full of sin. God, please forgive us. Forgive us and wash us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Cleanse us, sir. 
Be merciful to us, God. Be merciful. God, you know our praying, Lord. You know, you know what kind of people we are, God. That's why we need your grace, God. Forgive us, God. Have mercy on us, Lord Jesus. And God, come and heal our land. Heal our land, God. God, rebuke the devourer, Lord, for our sakes, God. Rebuke the devourer, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we call upon you right now. I believe in you, God, to do what this word says that you will do. I believe you're the God of this Bible, and I believe you are a man of your word, a God that never let a single one of his words fall to the ground. We ask you to bless, sir, yes. these United States. Yes. Bless God. Lord, please, God, destroy this virus, I ask, in Jesus' name, kill it, sir. God, those who have been infected with it, God, heal them. God, protect protect the rest, God, from, from contracting this virus, sir, in Jesus' name. Lord, most of all, for those who may not know you or don't know you, I ask you, Lord, to save them. To save them, God. To save them. wanted to you could wave your hand spare me this heartache and change your plan